from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Think 2018. Brought to you by IBM. Welcome back to IBM Think 2018. My name is Dave Vellante and you're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. This is IBM's inaugural Think event. The company's consolidated about six major events into one. It's about, we're trying to figure it out, 30, 40,000 people. There's too many people to count. It's just uh, unbelievable. Mary O'Brien is here. She's the Vice President of Research and Development at IBM in from Cork, Ireland. Mary, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank you, Dave. So tell us a little bit more about your role at IBM as Head of Research and Development. Okay, so I'm Head of Research and Development for IBM Security, explicitly. Great. So um, in that capacity, I manage a worldwide team of researchers and developers, and we take um, products from you know, incubation, initial ideas, all the way through to uh, products in the field. Um, products that help defend businesses against cybercrime. So Ginny was talking today about you know, security as one of the tenets of your, your offerings at the core. Yeah. So everybody talks about security, you can't, you can't bolt it on. Um, you know, there's a lot of sort of conversations around that. What does that mean? security at the core from a, from a design and R&D perspective? That actually means that um, the developers of applications are actually aware of um, security best practices as they design, as they architect and design their, their applications so that they don't deliver applications to the field that have vulnerabilities that can be exploited. So instead of trying to secure a perimeter of an application or a product or um, you know, a perimeter full stop, they actually design security into the, the application. It makes it a much more efficient, much cheaper way to deliver security, and also, you know, much stronger security base there. So I wonder if you could relate sort of what you guys are doing in security with what, what's happened in the market over the last 10 or 15 years. So it used to be security was, you know, hacktivists and, you know, throw some malware in and maybe do some disruption and it's become cyber criminals, you know, mm -hmm. big, big business now. And then of course you've got nation states. Mm -hmm. How have you had to respond uh, specifically within the R&D organization to deal with those threats? So, um, you know, you, you have described the evolution of cybercrime over the last years, um, and for sure it's no longer kids in a basement, you know, hacking to, for the fun of it. Um, cybercrime is big business, and, um, you know, the, the, there's money to be made for cyber criminals, so as a result, they're looking to, to hack in and get high value assets out of enterprises. Um, and of course, we as an organization and as a security business unit have had to respond to that by really understanding um, you know, what constitutes a very mature um, set of security competencies and practices and you know, how we, we break down this massive problem into you know, bite-sized consumable pieces that any business can consume and work into their enterprise in order to protect them. Um, so we have developed um, a portfolio of products that um, look at um, protecting all parts of your enterprise, um, you know, by infusing security everywhere, you know, on your devices, um, on the, you know, the, the perimeter of your business, protecting your data, protecting all sorts. And we also have developed um, a huge practice of security professionals who actually will go out and do it for you or will, you know, assess your security posture and tell you where you've got problems and how to fix them. Uh, I remember a piece that our head of research, Peter Burris, wrote years ago, um, and it was entitled something like, uh, bad user behavior will trump good security every time. Yeah. And so, my, and my understanding is phishing is obviously one of the big problems today. Uh, how do you combat that? Can you use machine intelligence to help people, you know, users that aren't security conscious, sort of avoid the mistakes that they've been making? So. Before I get into the, the complicated, advanced um, you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence practices that we're bringing to bear now, you know, it's important to um, be clear that um, you know, a vast number of breaches come from the inside. So they come from 
either the sloppy employee who doesn't change their password often or uses the same password for work and play and the same password everywhere, or you know, the unfortunate employee who uh, clicks on um, a malicious link and you know, takes in some malware into their, into their devices and, and malware that can actually you know, move horizontally th through the business. Or it can come from you know, the end user or the, the insider with malicious intent. Okay, so um, it's pretty clear to all of us that basic security hygiene is the fundamental. So actually making sure that your, your laptop, your, your devices are patched. They have the latest security patches on board. Um, security practices are understood, basic password hygiene and et cetera. That's kind of the start. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay, keep going. Okay, so. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> so, you know, and of course, um, you know, in this uh, era of um, cybercrime, as we've seen it evolve in the last few years, um, the the security industry has reached a perfect storm because it's well known that by 2020, there'll be uh, 1.2 million unfilled security uh, professional roles, okay? Now, couple that with the fact that there are in the region, in the same time frame, in the region of 50 billion connected devices um, in the internet of things. So what's happening is the attack landscape and you know they, the attack surface is, in, is increasing. The opportunity for the cyber criminalist to attack is increasing and the number of professionals available to to fight that crime is not increasing because there's huge shortage so you know you heard Jenny this morning talking about the era of man assisted by machine so infusing artificial intelligence and machine learning into security products and practices is um, another instantiation of man being assisted by machine, and that is our, um, our tool and our, our new practice in the fight against cybercrime. Mm, so when I talk to security professionals, consistently they tell us that they have more demand for their services than supply to chase down you know, th threats. Uh, mm -hmm. they, have, they struggle to prioritize. They struggle with just too many false positives. Mm -hmm. um, and they need help, they're not as productive as they'd like to be. Mm -hmm. Can machine intelligence assist there? Absolutely. So uh, computers, um, let's face it, computers are ideally placed to pour over vast quantities of data, uh, looking for trends and anomalies, and really finding the needle in the haystack. They have such a vast um, capacity to do this that's way out, uh, you know, that way surpasses what a human can do. And um, so, you know, with, um, in this era of machine learning, you can actually, you know, equip a computer with a set of basic rules and, you know, set it loose on vast quantities of data and let it test and iterate those rules with this data um, and become um, increasingly um, knowledgeable, uh, you know, about the data, the trends in the data, what the data, what good data looks like, what anomalous data looks like, and um, at speed point out the anomalies and find that needle in the haystack. So there's a stat, I, I, depending on which, you know, firm you look at or which, which organization you believe, but it's it's scary nonetheless that the average penetration is only det is detected. 250 or 350 days after mm -hmm. uh, the infiltration. And you know, that is a scary stat. I think it'd take a year to find out that somebody's in infiltrated my organization or whatever it is, 200 days. Is that number shrinking? Uh, is the industry as a whole, not just IBM, attacking that figure? First of all, is it a valid figure? And, and, and are you able to attack that? Well, the figure is definitely scary. Um, I don't know whether your figure is exactly yeah, well, the latest figure, but it's a scary figure. Yeah. And, um, and it's well known that attackers will get in. So, of course, there's, um, there's the various uh, phases of you know, protecting yourself. So you're going to try to avoid the attackers getting in in the first place using the various um, hygienic means of you know, keeping your devices and, you know, clean and um, free from vulnerabilities and so on. Um, but you've also got to 
be aware that the attacker does get in. So now you've got to make sure that you limit the damage that they can cause when they're in. So, of course, um, you know, security is, is a, you know, you can take a layered approach to security. So you've got to firstly understand what is your, your, your most valuable data, where are your most valuable assets, and layer up the levels of security around those first. So you make sure that if the attacker gets in, they don't get there, and you limit the damage they can do. And then, of course, you limit their ability to exfiltrate data and get anything out of your organization. Because, I mean, if they're just in there, of course, they can do some damage. But the real damage happens when they can ma manage to exfiltrate data and do something with that. So again, it, Mary, it makes sense that, that artificial intelligence or machine intelligence could help with this, but specifically, what do you see as the, the, the future role of Watson as it relates to cybersecurity? So I mentioned the, the shortage of, um, of pro security professionals mm -hmm. and uh, that growing problem. Okay, so. So Watson in our cybersecurity space um, acts as an assistant to the security analyst. Um, so we have taught Watson the language of cybersecurity and Watson manages to ingest um, vast troves of um, unstructured security data. That means blogs and you know, written text of security data from, that's available on the internet and out there all day, every day. It just, it just ingests this and uh, fills a corpus of knowledge with, this, with these jewels of information. And basically, that information and that corpus of knowledge is now available to a security analyst who, you know, a junior security analyst could take years to become very efficient and to really be able to recognize the needle in the haystack themselves. But with a Watson assistant, they can embellish um, their understanding and what they see and all of the, um, all of the relationships and um, the, the, the data that augments the, uh, the detail about a cyber incident, you know, fairly instantaneous and, it, you know, really um, augment their own knowledge with um, the knowledge that would take years to, to generate. You know? So, I wonder if we could talk about collaboration a little bit. Sure. Because this is good, good versus evil. You guys are like one of the superheroes and your competitors are also sort of superheroes. Of so you got Batman, you got Superman, Catwoman, and, Sp and Spider-Man, et cetera. How do you guys collaborate and, and, and share uh, in a, in a com highly competitive industry? Well, there are various for us. Um, you know, appearing for sharing. Okay, so so firstly, uh, you absolutely nailed the importance for sharing because, you know, the um, the cyber criminals share on the dark web. They actually um, they share, they sell their wares, they trade. You know, so very important for us to share as well. So, um, you know, there there are various uh, industry forum for sharing, and also organisations like IBM have created collaborative um, capabilities. Like we have our X Force Exchange, which is basically a sharing portal. So any of our of our um, competitors, our other security organisations, our interested parties can create, um, you know, a, a, a piece of work describing a particular incident that they're investigating or a particular event that's happening and others can add to it and they can share information. Now, historically, people have not been keen to share in this space, so it is an evolving event. So speaking of superheroes, I got to ask you, a lot of security professionals that I talk to say, well, when I was a kid, I read comic books, you know, I envisioned saving the world. <laughs> how, did you, how did you get into this? And was that you as a kid? Did you, like, no, it wasn't. I'm, I, I'm not um, a long-term security professional, um, and um, but I've been in technology and evolving products um, for you know in in the telecommunication business and and now security um, over many years, and so I got into this um, to bring that capability of delivering quality software and hardware products to the field. Um, back in 2013 when a part of our IBM security business needed some leadership. Um, so I had the opportunity to um, take my family to Atlanta, Georgia to lead a part of the IBM security business then. Well, it's a very challenging field. It's, it's one of those you know, never-ending you know, missions. So thank you for your, your hard work and congratulations on all the success. 
Thank you, David. All right, appreciate you coming on theCUBE, Mary. Thank you. Keep it right there, buddy. We'll be back with our next guest. You're watching theCUBE. We're live from IBM Think 2018 in Las Vegas. Be right back. <laughs>